it really is the complete package that is hassle free. A big hello to you, it's so great to see you and I hope I find you well on what is actually an incredibly hot day. So stay hydrated and put a hat on if you go out in the sun. And if you're wondering what that sound that sounds like a whole load of fans blowing cold air at me is, well, it's a whole load of fans blowing cold air at me. We're not used to hot weather here in the UK, so we don't have air conditioning. But we're going to soldier on through this. And today it's the turn of the Acura Scale Class 37 to get a close scrutiny. And certainly this is a model that when Acura Scale announced that they were going to take on the English Electric Type 3, I thought that's quite a bold move, going up against some quite well established models that themselves have gone through several iterations of retooling work. But Acura Scale are never ones to shy away from the difficult tasks, and certainly when they delivered their Class 55, that really was an incredible model, and certainly here at the channel, it was great to be able to review that, and it impressed me so much, I immediately marched out and got myself one from Rails of Sheffield in that two-tone green livery, and it really is a lovely model, but it set the bar very, very high. Now, can the Acura Scale Class 37 not only live up to the legacy that is there from the Class 55, but can it beat the competition? Well, with thanks to Acura Scale, who very kindly loaned one of their demonstration and photography models to the channel so that we can have a good close look, let's see if it matches up to expectations. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique. .co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. But I'm really quite excited about these models. I have to say I've seen a lot of posts about them and the first three that arrived sold out pretty much instantly and that's always a really good sign. Now the Class 37 is a very long-lived locomotive, arguably the most successful of the British Railway diesel locomotive designs, outlasting even some of those that came after it, like the Class 58. And certainly with some examples still running on the main line, they really are the locomotive class that keeps on giving, and that makes them an obvious choice to make a ready-to-run model of. But to have a Cura scale manage to deliver on all of the hype and expectation. But first I'd like to ask a big big favour and if you really do like the video today please consider tickling that like button and sharing it on social media. It's a great way of showing your love and if you haven't already done so do please consider subscribing as well. Now on with the video. <laughs> When Acura Scale announced that they were going to be doing the Class 37 English Electric Type 3, it was a really bold move because this is a model which has appeared in various ranges from various manufacturers over the years. And more recently, there are two different versions that are also available, including one from a competitor which was considered to be a pretty reasonable model. And uh, after Acura Scale announced that they were doing this with the lead times, they obviously must have known that that would give opportunity for the competitor to up their game and that's precisely what one did with retooling one of their models. So Acura Scale have gone on to this knowing that they had to deliver something special and based on the Class 55 that they released last year I think that this really is going to be that something special but they very kindly loaned one to the channel uh, for us to take a good close look at. Now 
There have been three already released and uh, these have actually sold out incredibly quickly. And this is from the second release of models and they're doing them three at a time with a little bit of a gap in between and I suspect this is to allow the factory to keep making them uh, without having to uh, store lots of them before sale and it also is really useful for the modeler because it does mean that uh, you get a little bit of an opportunity to save up if you've ordered more than one of these. Now it comes in the really strong solid uh, Acura scale box that we've seen from other releases. I'll just show you the end of the box there. This is the class 370 locomotive number 37027 and this is in BR blue with the white stripe suitable for era 7 and this is a full DCC sound fitted version. Now what I will say is that this is the display one that they've had for photographs and such like. So it is a production model, but it has had all the detailing parts fitted, but I will talk you through that as we delve in here. Now, the first thing on the top is uh, this owning, driving, maintaining the early Scottish Class 37s. And you might look at this and think, oh, look at that. You'd have thought for review, they'd have made sure they didn't have coffee rings on, uh, on the paperwork. But that's where you're wrong, actually. This is a really nice reproduction in the authentic style of uh, the kind of documents and paperwork and pamphlets that you would have seen in the 1960s and 1970s, even down to the rusty uh, staple on there. And that's not actually a real staple, it's just printed on. And inside as well, even the typeface and the layout is authentic. And we've got these period adverts which would have appeared in the trade press. Now this gives a, a history of the locomotives going through uh, lots of the quirks and detail differences. It's quite comprehensive actually. And this is much more comprehensive than you'd normally get with uh, locomotives released ready to run. We've got a class history and also a driver's eye view from one of the people who spent 15 or so years actually driving these machines. Now Lock Isle is a, a locomotive which wasn't the first uh, locomotive, uh, 37 rather, to be named, uh, but it was certainly one of the earlier ones in the early 1980s. Now we've also got the more familiar um, a paperwork with this, just you know, the usual stuff. Plus I always love these exploded diagrams. They show how much goes into assembling one of these models. I think I counted at least 179 or so individual pieces that is assembled in the in the factory on these plus we've got a little bit of detail just there on how you get the body off but um, don't worry about taking the body off because for most people you never need to there's also this card in here new variant announcement so um i'm gonna gonna show you because it's here in the paperwork and uh, this is a new version of their class 31 um, and this is uh, the uh, sort of transition period where it's post steam but before tops came in and it's a normally quite a neglected period of uh, BR modelling and we've got here the class 31 in its uh, green livery with the white stripes full yellow ends and the D number has lost its D and this is a th class 31 1. Um, so I'm just going to show you that. There we go. Put that back in the box. And then we've also got the uh, lock sound uh, functions list. And when you look at this, uh, 14 auxiliary uh, outputs for lights. Um, I've never seen that many in use on a model before. And it does mean if you get the DCC ready model and you want to put in your own decoder, do bear in mind that to get all of the lighting functions working, you're going to need uh, a 14 output decoder. And uh, that is probably gonna be quite difficult, but certainly you need as many auxiliary functions as you can get. And uh, then we've got all of what all the other uh, functions do. We will come back to that. And let's get this out of the box now. As I said before, this is the uh, the beauty model for photography, and I suspect it's the one which will end up on display on the Acura scale stand uh, when they do shows. 
and as such the full detailing has been applied so you can see there on the front we've got the snow plows and all of this fabulous uh, front buffer beam detail and they're actually quite robust um, I am being quite cruel to them there with my finger and they're all staying put and that has been applied to both ends although I've been told uh, I can strip one end off so that I can apply a coupling now they didn't send any couplings in the box uh, but I found out that the class 55 and class 92 coupling uh, attachment assembly should just fit onto this so we will do a full haulage test and the other difference as well is the lock aisle nameplate you will find on your model that that is printed on uh, but you do get these fully finished etches uh, in the box to apply yourself if you so wish um, but they have been applied to this model the rest of this well we've got uh, I think I'm told about 560 grams of weight that is well over half a kilo and that is a huge amount of weight this is one of the heaviest locomotives in 00 um, that I have held and it's fair to say that that is uh, probably going to make this a stellar performer on the track in terms of haulage capacity. It is all-wheel drive and all-wheel pickup and I think that means that we're going to get some really great performance from this. One thing that does strike me is just how detailed these bogies are. So you can see there the amount of detail on these bogies and they're not just a flat one-piece moulding. We've got representation of the primary and secondary suspension. There are a lot of separately fitted details with these cylinders, the pipework, and of particular note are these steps. You can see there they incorporate etched parts. You just see uh, through them there. They are really quite exquisite, quite fine, far better than anything that could be molded in plastic. And they are actually really robust as well. We've also got some uh, bogey chains that uh, attach the bogies to the body. I've only ever seen this before on the uh, Acura Scale Class 55 and of notice that they did get feedback that these could become quite loose on uh, some of the uh, uh, Class 55 models and that has been addressed on this particular model and it just shows that Acura Scale do pay attention to feedback and uh, are quite prepared to make improvements where improvements are needed. The um, slab sided shape of the Class 37 is actually captured quite well. We've got a lot of uh, detail on this body side. The grills appear to be moulded. Now I'm looking very closely at those. Um, I think they are moulded as part of the body sides rather than separately applied etches. That is something that does, on the face of it, make them much more robust. Um, it has been levelled as a criticism against the 92 that the body side etchings uh, did have a habit of breaking free. The glue was not the best. So I think this is a great compromise. Also keeps down on the cost of assembly of these models and certainly the price point on these at £169 RRP. DCC ready is certainly very favourable compared with what we have seen over the years with the uh, inexorable uh, marching upwards of prices. Now the front face of the locomotive is often its most important defining feature. And that is an area where Acura Scale have got this really, really well. We've got a wealth of separate lighting details. We've got vents. And I do particularly like this little round vent here. Very characteristic feature with that grill in there. That is so nicely done. Next to it, a nice crisp, sharp overhead warning sign. Now we've also got uh, marker lights in the split head code boxes. Later on, these got plated over, as you see here. And we ended up with these sort of domino style um, head codes. Then we've also got the car headlight. Very, very interesting feature of uh, some of the locomotives working from Eastfield Depot. And that is replicated and it is fully functional. We've got uh, a lot of separately applied detail just underneath there. And again, really robust. Nothing is coming off. And then these sprung buffers. These are a particular favourite point of mine. You see there with the silver shafts, but it's a pleasing spring on those. And I, I love that, that metallic silver shaft. And again, same on the other end. The glazing too is particularly well done. 
there's none of that uh, milk bottle bottom effect around the edges. It's, it's totally smooth. Uh, it's some of the best glazing that I've seen on a model to date. And when we look to the side of the cabs, this cab window here, we've got printed onto the glazing the divide on the real locomotive. It's actually two windows with a metal bar in between. And um, the finish on the glazing is so good that that really, you could believe that that is two separate um, pieces of glazing. The rest of the printing is really quite sharp. The 37027 and the TOPS data panel, really nicely done. This uh, white stripe, which really does set this livery off, is straight and true, exactly where it needs to be. Just above this uh, curve on the bottom of the body shell, Again, another area which can so easily be done wrong is done very right on this model. And then we've got the uh, cowls just on the buffer beam. Now, there's a lot of difference between different 37s. They were very long lasting. Um, arguably one of the most successful locomotive classes introduced by BR. Um, and if the class 25s were nicknamed rats because they got everywhere, then the 37 really ought to be nicknamed the Ever Ready Bunny because they were ready to go and kept on going and certainly their lifespan was an amazing act of longevity. These were some of the few BR diesels that are still running today with some operators. There's a plethora of BR liveries which Acura Scale are exploiting in their releases. Plus we've got the privatisation era with EWS and there's two different versions of that EWS livery, DB Schenker. Uh, but also these have run with uh, West Coast Rail and DRS as well. So there's certainly a huge wealth of potential liveries. Looking to the roof again separately applied handrail detail all over these roof hatches. The fan too is one of the best that I've seen, although it has to be said that it doesn't spin up. And that's one area where it would be nice to think that Acura Scale, if they wanted to uh, revisit and upgrade any aspect of this model, having a working roof fan is something we're seeing coming through from other manufacturers. And I guess it's it's an interesting option to be able to have a fan that spins even when the locomotive isn't moving, but the actual shape and profile of that fan is perfect. It really does look like it means business. It's recessed the correct amount, and uh, certainly there you can see the pitch and shape of those fan blades is absolutely perfect. It actually looks like it's made of fabricated metal and not plastic. The grille over the top is really, really nice. So, so fine, really nicely done, and it is incredibly robust as well. Looking further to the side, we've got the West Highland Terrier, the Westie, which was so characteristic, the uh, a personalizing mark that was applied to a lot of Eastfield locomotives. That is represented on the side there really, really well. And then uh, again, the body side glazing, there's none of that milk bottle bottom effect on the sides. And we do have engine room lights on this as well. And uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, what you can actually see in there. Um, I suspect it's uh, um, just simply a case you'll get light out the window. I'm not sure what engine room detail there might be. The vents on the roof as well, look at that. They go down and down, just like the real ones. There's no sense of them just being fakes. They're the real deal. They just go right down in there. The rivet detail and the banding on the roof is perfectly done and the complex compound curves of the body side uh, really do look good to me. Front of the cab as well, we've got that raked leaning back of the uh, window frames there, really nicely done. Looking on the underside, we've got a wealth of detail. Look at the front of these fuel tanks, lots of separately applied pipe work. Even between the fuel tanks, you can see there, the detail just keeps on coming. And again, the same at the other end. It really is a great model of the Class 37. One final observation that I want to share with you, which I thought was particularly good, is the application of the couplings on here. Now, it has to be said that this is the only 37 model I've seen where you can add the snow plows 
and the buffer beam pipe detail. Both of these can go on together. Moreover, out of necessity, I discovered that you can have your coupling and all the pipe detail and these will work quite happily together. That's not something I've ever seen on any other manufacturer's locomotive where it's very much an either or with the coupling and buffer beam detailing and that really is a great feature. And for DCC fitting this is one of the easiest that I've ever seen. Just like the Class 55, this entire roof section comes off and is held by magnets. And that means you get a good positive uh, clunk click every trip. And with that off, you can actually see that those vents do go all the way through. And uh, it's quite clever, actually. They've used the matte black of the speaker setup to uh, just make it look like you're just seeing um, darkness. I think that's really quite clever uh, use of what is on the inside so you don't see just electronics or, or light through them. The speaker comes factory fitted and you can see we've got the two cones on this. This is I believe an earth mover and it really does give a loud loud sound where it needs it with plenty of bass reproduction. This particular model is factory fitted with the ESU Lock Sound 5 and that fits in just here. If you're fitting your own decoder then uh, that's where you're going to be putting it. There is also a factory fitted Stay Alive into the deal as well. When it comes to um, putting the uh, roof back on it's just simply a case of fit and forget and give it a good shake. That is not coming off. Now certainly we've passed the test for the looks here and let's see what it can do on track. Let's get it running on Weir Yard. Once I've got the locomotive on the track with a uh, coupling fitted from the Acura Scale Class 92, which is a perfect fit into the socket, it really was a faultless performer. I had it running up and round on Weir Yard with no real issues whatsoever. It very much deserves the nickname the Ever Ready Bunny because it just kept going, helped by that enormous weight which gave it great traction and with all wheel drive it's able to use all of that weight to great effect. I had it on an exceptionally long coal train and it was like the wagons just weren't there. Not a hint of wheel slip, not a hint of a problem. When this locomotive growls and says come along, the wagons can do nothing but follow. It really was a stellar performer. The sound functions on it really were good as well and it's a particularly good setup where you can drive hold and that effectively means you hit one of the function keys and then the locomotive will rev up but not actually move and it's a great way of enjoying that Acura thrash to the max even if you don't necessarily have a big layout to put it on. Through some of the point work the locomotive did kind of uh, jump around a little bit and I did have a little bit of an issue on the steeply graded track when going over twisted point work which is there to test locomotives but uh, this has been reviewed by a lot of magazines, it has been run a lot and it is the demo model from a Cura scale so also add to that it's an incredibly hot day which does tend to play havoc with track spacing I'm liable to give this quite a bit of leeway but certainly on the main track this locomotive didn't put a wheel wrong
Next up, I'm going to demonstrate to you the sound of the locomotive by making use of that drive hold on F7 to stop the locomotive from rolling off. And then we can really enjoy the sound of that English electric power unit thrashing its heart out. So let's go ahead and get us started up. For the next demonstration, I'm going to show you the stay alive and how long it will last for once power is interrupted. And this stay alive is factory fitted and works out of the box with that ESU Lock Sound 5, which makes this the complete package that is hassle free. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started up. So lift it off the track. And there you go. So certainly long enough to be able to get across any uh, little dead spots on your track without interrupting the sound at all. And certainly make sure that this is a faultless performer. I've turned the lights down a little bit just to be able to show you the lights on this model. So at the moment we've got the tail lights showing on the end. Change direction. And that all lights up again. Change direction. And they've got a really pleasing sequence in which they go out and come back on. Another one of the lighting functions which is independently controlled is the driver's control desk lights. Let's just bring them up. And you can see in there that they all light up and if you add a driver figure that's going to illuminate the face of that driver figure really quite nicely just as you would see a driver in a real locomotive bathed in the glow of its instrument panel. The next lighting function is the cab light and you can see with the cab light on that amazing detail and finish that is inside the cab. It also brings to the fore just how good the glazing is because we've got no distortion as we look on into that full cab. You can also get the car headlight to go off independently. And finally, we've got the engine room lighting. So we come now to the scores. And first up is build quality. And I was incredibly impressed. None of the detail has come free. And one area where I was particularly keen on checking these bogey chains all seem to be intact and much better than the Class 55's arrangement. I was particularly impressed by items such as these steps on the bogies. I was expecting these to be particularly fragile, but they are anything but. And indeed, all of the detail has firmly stayed put on this model, which is testament to how well it's been assembled. Even the additionally applied detailing 
has stayed put and I really do like the fact that you can prod and push this to your heart's content and there's a lot of give in it without risking any damage. The only area where I had any kind of concern is the coupling and it did feel a little bit loose in the socket assembly that it uses and it meant that this could quite easily just drop out. It didn't do that but it did feel like there was a risk over time that it would drop down and fall out. It's only a minor gripe and certainly if it bothered you then a little dab of PVA would be enough to keep it from doing that. I'm going to give this a 9.8. On running quality the model really was a stalwart performer able to pull a huge rake of wagons that's probably far longer than most people would be in a position to test it with. It pulled them away like they almost weren't there. The Stay Alive made for faultless performance even with the sound running there was no stuttering or anything and certainly no sign of wheel slip. The only area where I had any kind of issue was when I tried it on my torture test track. There was a propensity for the bogies to come off the track on a particular twisted point set, which is set up specifically to put locomotives to the extreme of tests. Now, I do have to stress that this is the round robin locomotive. It's a loner that really has done the rounds, and I believe it's even been as far afield as Canada for review in magazines and also put through extensive testing. It's run far more than most people would be able to run their own locomotive and passed through far more unsympathetic hands. And some of that I will put down to the issues that I had with it, with three of the axles being slightly wide to gauge, although this is something which is quite easy to fix, making use of a back-to-back -back gauge and just a little bit of pressure. But I'm going to give it a 9.1. On DCC fitting and innovation, this is really where this model scores well. I've never seen so many different lighting functions on one locomotive, and they're not gimmicky either. They actually serve a purpose, and that purpose is clearly visible and adds something to the model. The main area where this really scores hands down is this easy roof removal piece. With those magnets, it really is a doddle to gain access to the decoder and to the speaker. To do your own fitting, it really couldn't be simpler. And it leaves you thinking, why can't all models be this simple? And it doesn't compromise the detail or anything else. We put that roof hatch back on and everything fits perfectly. There's really no excuse for other manufacturers to not have simple DCC fitting just like that. So I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. On accuracy and quality of finish, again, the accuracy of this locomotive is second to none. It really does look the business and there is so much attention to detail. At the end of the day, if I had to level a criticism, I'm really struggling to find what that would be. And after a lot of thought, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. On value for money, the RRP at £169 is really quite good in this day and age, and certainly for a locomotive this loaded with features. There's also the factory sound fitted option, and again, that comes in at around the ballpark figure of what you would pay for the DCC ready version from another manufacturer. It really is great value for money. Things are getting expensive, but a Cura scale have shown that they don't have to be quite as expensive as you might think. And I'm going to give them a 9.5, giving us an overall total of 48.4. This is an amazing model from a Cura scale, and certainly is a proud follow up to models such as the Class 55. It's holding the Acura scale torch high and making it a very high bar for anybody else to beat. But I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And don't forget that we've got an affiliate link down in the description box to help you find your own Acura Scale Class 37 if you liked what you saw in today's video. 
They've got so many different variants that are announced as forthcoming. And the Class 37 is such a long-lived locomotive with so many different liveries that it's carried and so many different possible running numbers that I'm sure that this is going to be a regular re-released model in the years to come. I'd also love to hear from you in the comment section down below just what you thought about today's video, what you thought about the uh, locomotive in question, and if you've got any thoughts or observations that maybe you think I missed, it's a really great way of passing on information to other modelers out there. And uh, I'd love to know about your real world experiences if you've already got one of these Class 37s, or maybe you've got one on order and you're really looking forward to it. Do leave a comment down below. Don't forget as well you can check us out over on Patreon and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see and please tickle that like button, share this video to social media and subscribe if you've not already done so. Also don't forget to check out our merchandise store where we've got a whole plethora of t-shirts, hoodies, mugs and so much more with a variety of great designs and colours. There's always something to make you the best dressed modeler at the model shows, at your model club or even in your model railway room. Check it out today at the link down below. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at clarkrailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest loco. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Popper, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.